Hello there. Hello, welcome. As you can see, the blue is back, which means it's a Synapse video. Now I'm going to carry on looking at Synapse Link for Dataverse. So I've got some videos in which I went through setting up Synapse Link and then how to read that data using Synapse serverless SQL pools. But we've had a new feature added, which is the ability to export to Delta Lake, which is underpinned by the by the Parquet file format. Delta is a much more efficient file format to deal with in terms of reading data. So it's actually, you know, a really welcome addition to be able to do that. Because our other option is CSV. And obviously data at scale, we've got a bit of a challenge with CSV because it's quite inefficient in terms of reading. So really good, really good that uh, Delta Lake support has been added. However, a couple of things we've got to be aware of when we're setting up our Synapse link and what the results are. So we're going to jump in to Synapse workspace first because the very first thing you've got to do is set up a Spark pool. So if I go into manage and look at my Apache Spark pools, then I already have one set up. Uh, DH Spark link. So if I open that up, uh, look at the configuration. Um, it's a small node size, just four vCores. Auto scale is enabled between five and 10 nodes. So that's in Microsoft's documentation to enable auto scale. And I've got to set it to Spark 3.1. I just want to make sure I'm zoomed in. Yep. So when you set it up your Spark pool, you've got to make sure it's 3.1. If I wanted to create a, a new pool, I could just click new, you know, enter the information that I need so I can you know, scale that out, go to additional settings and then you know, select my Spark version. Okay, so I've already set up a Spark pool that I'm gonna use in that Synapse Link configuration. Now, if you go and set up the configuration, so I'm back in the Power Apps portal, so make.powerapps.com. I've got my Dynamics 365 environment selected, and now I can set up a new link. Actually, before I do that, what I've got to do, I've got to append an extra bit to the URL. And again, that's all in the official documentation and in the blog, uh, the blog post in the description of the video, but you've got to add this athena.deltalake equals true to the URL. Now, when I come back to the Synapse link environment and click on a new Synapse link, so we'll just wait for that to load. Create a new link. I'm going to connect to a Synapse workspace. Uh, choose my subscription. Select my resource group, which is my Dynamics 365. There's only one Synapse workspace, so it's already picked that up. Now I click the Use Spark Pool for Delta Lake conversion. And that's the most important thing. It's a conversion. So the data that's coming out of the Dataverse isn't directly being written into Delta, it's being written to CSV. Then there's a Spark batch job that is picking up that CSV and merging it into the downstream Delta table, which means that we have Spark pools running. So now we've, sat, we've selected the Spark pool and I've got my storage account um, in the Synapse workspace as well. And then I can now select tables. Now, one of the important configurations here is this time interval. <clears throat> that dictates the schedule that the Spark pools in Synapse will fire themselves up, go and get the CSV data and process it downstream into Delta. So for example, if I leave it for the default 15 minutes, 
if data in my Dynamics environment is changing throughout the day, the Synapse link will be near real time exporting that data to CSV. And then every 15 minutes, the Spark job will start up, take that CSV and process it downstream. As you can imagine, the shorter the interval, the more times the Spark pool is going to run and Spark pools are a chargeable service. So we can change that to 60 minutes. Let me change that to 60. We can change it to 180, whatever, whatever we need to do. You know, I'm just going to keep it to the default 15 for now. But it's an important consideration. If you want to increase the latency and you know, essentially decrease the cost and the amount of times the spark pools are running, increase that time interval. All of the tables options are set to append only. And basically what that means is that no data will be deleted from the destination. So without the spark pool configuration, you could actually set up to append the data or not. And that means that if you delete any data in Dynamics and you don't have that append option on, then that data flows downstream as actually deleted from the, uh, the record set. And you would have to then deal with that in your downstream ETL processes. Whereas this append only, it's got a nice flag to say whether the record has been deleted or not. I'm just going to pick one table, the contact table, my favorite table. And if I save that, then we're going to get a creating file system. So we're going to get all of the stuff in the top left in terms of statuses. And what it's doing is it's essentially based on your user account, it is now setting up the permissions between the Synapse link and the storage account to stream the data out. So it won't be using your permissions to do the synchronization. It's setting up you know, its own permissions to be able to do that. So we'll probably leave that for a few minutes, jump cut back when these tables are finished. So now the table has finished its initial synchronization, which is just to CSV at this stage. So we can see that the sync status is active. We've got a row count of 10. Now, if you jump into the Synapse workspace and just have a little look at the storage account. So if we go in here, then what we'll do is we can browse down into the container. And we've got, let me just refresh. So there we go, we've got some couple of folders now coming through. If I dive into the first one, you can see that we've got like the table name, so contact. We go into contact, you can see that we've got a CSV, right? So it's, as I said, it doesn't immediately go into Delta, exports it to CSV first. And if we go into this folder, then don't see anything there. So essentially, you know, we've got some CSV data that has been exported from the Dataverse. Now, from the initial time that we set up this Synapse link, got to wait a little while for the first batch job to come along and take that CSV and write it out to Delta. So now we're back in Synapse. If we have a look at the monitoring tab and have a look at that Apache Spark applications activities log, it's going to show us the batch processing that's happened. So we can filter and say, look, I'm going to add a filter on the pool and just get the Spark pool that I created for this. I've already got one Spark application running anyway. But what that's done is that's taken the CSV and it's processed it into Delta. So if we have a little look at the storage, so let's have a look at data, go into the container. We've now got a Delta Lake folder and actually the original folder that the CSV was in 
is gone. It's been tidied up. So it doesn't actually keep that CSV data. That CSV data is just transient while it's processing it downstream into Delta. But if we go into Delta, into the Delta Lake, we can see the folders. So we can see, you know, contact underscore partitions. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then all of those kind of metadata tables that get exported as part of Synapse Link. Go into the contact table and we can see our to normal delta constructs. We've got a log and we've got a folder because this is partitioned by year. So go into the log and we can see you know, JSON file. And if we go into the partition, then we have the parquet files where all the data is stored uh, with snappy compression. Now, just worth noting that once a day, there is an optimized job that will run and it'll come along and it'll optimize these tables, i.e. it'll crunch a whole bunch of small files into a much more efficient uh, larger file. So you'll see that on a daily basis in your Spark applications, as well as the scheduled Delta Lake merging processes as well. But this optimize and vacuuming only happens once a day. So it's one, one batch job a day. So from there, if we go back into our workspace and I'm just going to refresh the tables and we can see that we have contact and contact partition. Now that's normal. Every table that we set up for synchronization gets two tables created. You've got the base table and you've got the partitioned table. Now in the original Synapse Link setup, the reason you've got two tables there is that one of those tables points to a folder that is the near real time sync, but there's a chance that there could be a file lock on the CSV when you're reading it and you'll get a lock error. The partitioned table is the table that is updated on a less frequent basis, points to a, you know, a different folder in the data lake, less chance of a locking conflict, less chance of a problem. In terms of the Delta Lake, it's slightly different in that what I'll do is I'll just create a new script to select from the contact table. And what I'll do is let me just get rid of this big long Dataverse database, get rid of the properties, um, use the database. Yep, 438. Select there, I'm just going to hide the Synapse menu. And there's our data coming from that Delta Lake folder in the, 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 the Data Lake. If I scroll all the way to the right, then we've got this, you know, is delete function and the partition ID as well. If you want to do any partition, um, if you want to see what, uh, what the partition partition function is there. And then it's basically that is delete. It will show as true if you delete anything in Dynamics and it gets updated through into the Synapse Link table. Now I do go into this in a bit more detail in the blog, so it's well worth the read about that. It's worth calling out that this contact table actually points to the contact partitioned folder. Whereas if I try and query that contact partitioned table, <clears throat> I'm going to get an error. It doesn't actually exist. So I'm going to just double, triple check that. Select, you know, da -da -da, click run, invalid object name. It creates the table called contact partitioned, but it doesn't actually point anywhere. So it's just worth calling out that you don't need that contact partition table if you're using the Synapse link for Dataverse with the Delta Lake, because the contact table in effect is that underlying Delta data. So there we go. 
it doesn't export directly to Delta. It first exports it in near real time into CSV, and then it'll spin up a Spark pool that you've specified in your Synapse Link setup, and it will then do the merge process based on that. And you can control that. As I said, let's just go back. You can control that with that option to, let me just click advanced, that time interval. Okay, so you can control that. Now, what you can't do is, you can't do an initial setup, go back to it and change that time interval. Unfortunately, that is set when you do this. So if you need to change the time interval, you'll have to come out of here and unlink and then relink and change the time interval. So that's really important in terms of that spark pool up and running. So if this has been useful, please like, feel free to comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, there's the other videos in the Synapse Link series to go through where we're setting up, you know, the basic process of, of, uh, of the Synapse Link. And then this video just essentially advances on from that with this new feature. So anyway, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.